Thanks for clicking to watch here at IdahoReporter.com. We're on location on campus in the business faculty offices of Northwest Nazarene University, a private university in the beautiful city of Nampa. Now, you notice the gentleman next to me. He is wearing a clerical collar. You may be asking, what is a guy like him doing in a place like this? He is a Catholic priest that actually travels the world talking to people and educating people about private enterprise and private sector economies. Private property and the rule of law, as he likes to say. Father Robert Sirico from the Acton Institute. Welcome to Idaho, Father. Good to have you here. I'm delighted to be here. What is a guy like you doing in a place like this, for those who are completely unfamiliar? <laughs> well, I was invited, of course, uh, to be here. But I was uh, speaking about the relationship between economics and morality, the moral foundation of free enterprise, the fact that human beings are highly creative and that normally when you leave people alone, they create more than they consume. They can support their families and even have uh, money to make others uh, better off than they would be otherwise. Now, we have a real problem here in Idaho, as is the case around the country, with the creation of jobs. When you talk about being creative, we'd like to, to see more jobs. How do, how do we make that happen in Idaho and everywhere else in the country, for that matter? Well, uh, I suppose the, the things I would look at is the rate of taxation. What we know is that the most prosperous societies are those that have lower levels of taxation globally. So it's not even so much a cultural issue, it's, it's an economic issue. And then I would look at the other form of taxation, which people don't usually think of as taxation, but it is, and that's regulation. Uh, people need things done. And if people need things done and they're willing to pay for that to be done, then the question is, what's stopping them from getting other people to do them? And usually it's some form of regulation uh, or some level of taxation that disables people from having superfluous money to invest in other things or to go into business for themselves. Mm. Now, Father Sirico is uh, a very thoughtful man and very well spoken. He's also a native of, I think, the, the borough was Brooklyn. You, gotta, you don't. You, that right. What's don't, that? Don't mistake it for the Bronx. It's yeah, I don't want to do it. And you, you don't sound like you did back in the Brooklyn days. Oh, I can. Yeah. I can. When I'm with my family, it uh, really just shifts right in. It takes me weeks to get rid of it. How would you? How would you let Idahoans? You know, uh, uh, no, I'm not here to entertain. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Well, at the end of the day, what would you want people to know about the relationship between their faith? And economics. Some people would look at you and say, you know, what's this this Catholic priest doing talking about public policy and mixing religion and politics and whatnot? I don't think you are. I think you're talking about a vision for the world. What would you tell about uh, tell us about the relationship with our faith and the world around us? Well, let me just say two things. That it's interesting how quickly you jumped, and I think you really represent many viewers in jumping from economics to politics because they're really two different things. And generally, I think that politics and economics should be separated. People always talk about the separation of church and say it would be nice to have politics and economy as separate as possible. Now, I understand that you have to protect people's contracts and uh, property through law, but that doesn't descend into party politics, or at least it doesn't have to. I, I suppose the quick answer that I would give to the question of the relationship between believers and the economy is to remember the parable of the talents in Matthew, the 25th chapter, where it it shows the master giving talents to his servants and asking them to be productive with them. And so that's really an obligation on us. We each have been gifted with certain things, whether it's the ability to do things or some people it may be uh, a good sense of uh, color or style or writing or music or any number of things that people are, could be good at. And really cultivating that talent as though it really was what it is, a call from God and to, to treat that reverentially. So I, I would say there's, uh, you know, God put us in a world of scarcity and he expects us to be productive with the gifts that we're being given. You are a Catholic priest. You uh, are a parish priest, but you also head up an organization called the Acton Institute. Tell us about that and where that name Acton comes from. Well, the organization is named after Lord Acton, who was a 19th century um, historian who was very concerned about the role of liberty in society. He's probably best known for having said power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. He also said, and I think this is one of his most beautiful quotations, is that uh, liberty is the delicate fruit of a mature civilization. 
so that we we have liberty because uh, our civilization is mature to the point of appreciating it and understanding it. Now, we may be coming immature because I don't think there's as uh, heavy an emphasis in our minds on, on liberty. And our institution basically exists to help people think through the moral dimensions of human liberty. So we work with uh, religious leaders of all denominations, seminarians, writers, uh, teachers of various sorts to help them see that we need to bring sound economics to our good intentions. That's kind of the slogan we use. Everybody has good intentions. They want to help the poor. But your intentions on how to do that is not the same as doing it in intelligent ways, in ways that are effective. We've poured trillions of dollars into aid, for example, in international support programs that have not uh, aided the poor. Look at Haiti. Uh, a few years ago, it was devastated uh, by the, um, the hurricane that hit uh, and, then the, um, and then the earthquake. And how many aid workers went there and the country, there's still people living in tents. And this is just unacceptable where Wichita was virtually destroyed by a, a, a cyclone and it's back together and functioning now. I mean, it's, it's really a sad thing when people don't allow intelligence to operate in society. Where do, where do we find Acton Institute online? www.acton, A-C-T-O-N, dot org. Everybody wants to call it Action, but it's the Acton Institute. We got it. Acton.org. Thanks very much for being with us. And again, welcome to Idaho. Great being here. Thank you. While we still got you here and we're on campus at Northwest Nazarene University in the city of Nampa, I just want to point out something to you. Now, as I said earlier, we're in the faculty offices building in the business department, what they call the Hellstrom business offices, second floor of the building. And, and check this out. Notice these flags from around the world, the country of Canada represented here. This is the flag of China. Mexico is behind it. In the far back there, the flag of the country of Egypt. They have several flags from countries around the world. Each and every one of these flags represents a country from which students have traveled to attend and study business right here at Northwest Nazarene University, Nampa, Idaho, Canyon County. Just want you to know. Thanks for clicking to watch. For IdahoReporter.com, I'm Austin Hill.